Hi, I'm Lenny, and in this video, we are going to be talking about Godzilla, King of Monsters. Now, this film, Godzilla, King of Monsters, it is a sequel to 2014's Godzilla, and it's built off of kind of in a spin-off type of way off of 2017's Kong Skull Island. Um, this film is PG-13, and it's about 2 hours and 12 minutes long. Um, I have to admit, I, I don't know a lot about Godzilla. I do recall watching these as a kid on Saturday mornings on TV, like the dub versions. Um, but when it comes to the films, uh, I'm not a Godzilla fanatic. So this movie may not be aimed towards me. Uh, this may be something to uh, remember during this review. And I'm not saying all that because I think the movie is horrible, but I do have some issues with the film. Um, overall, it was a very interesting movie. I, I will say that. I felt that the first act moved very slowly, um, trying to build things and set it up. I was kind of a, a little bored uh, during the, the first act. But I can say the visuals and the sound are amazing. Um, it's a summer movie. It, it just came out, and it's, it's very typical. Uh, your summer beat them up. A almost mass destruction type of film you know it's monsters going at it um, in this film though they're, they're called Titans and don't worry no spoilers I'm not gonna spoil the film um, they're called Titans in this film um, but as, as visually stunning as this film was and as great sounding as this film was um, I just don't feel a connection to it um, to be honest with you, um, I didn't feel a connection with any of the characters. I could honestly care less what happened to any of them. Uh, they were all kind of just basically character cutouts uh, of characteristics or, 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 or film standards for an action movie, a summer a tentpole film. And there was no connection there. They were actually... All of them were quite annoying in, in one way or another. Um, so I didn't feel a connection. There was no sense of danger or ur urgency uh, while watching because whatever happened was going to happen. Um, I will say this, some, some pros, other pros about the film besides it being visually stunning and the sound being amazing is it's... It's better than the 1998 version of Godzilla that had uh, Matthew Broderick in it. I will say it's a much more enjoyable film and it's a more rounded out film. But I also kind of feel like the film was maybe unnecessary. I feel like the film is here to set up what they're aiming for next. And it seems like we're they're aiming for a uh, King Kong versus Godzilla movie. With the, with the Kong Skull Island tie-in uh, in the previous uh, King Kong movie and uh, some references, references in this film, I, I, I do feel that's the groundwork of where they're heading. Um, I won't spoil it as to what monsters or titans are in this film, and um, that's part of the surprise, I guess part of the fun. And like I said, uh, this movie's probably not aimed towards me. I'm probably not the demographic of this film. Um, I'm not a die-hard Godzilla fan. I do love monsters, but I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not someone that has seen every single Godzilla film that exists. So if I was to rate this film out of 10, um, how many LWs, LW, why? Because it's my initials, Lenny Wanser, so why not? Um, I would give this film I would give this film six L dubs out of ten, uh, but I feel like there's stuff lacking. I feel it's lacking some substance, um, and that's my feeling on it. If you have seen the film, if you're gonna see the film, please let me know what you think of it. Did you like Godzilla: King of Monsters? Uh, did you enjoy it? What's your favorite part? What's your favorite monster or Titan, as they're being called? 
As always, thank you so much. Thank you for stopping by on this video. Thank you for lending me your, your ears and letting me talk to you uh, for a couple minutes. Thank you so much.